Here is a problem where I'm being asked to find the second derivative of y with respect to x of an equation that involves a term of x squared and y squared. So implicit differentiation will be required to take the derivative of y squared. And because we're finding the second derivative, we'll have to use implicit differentiation more than once. Well, if I'm being asked to find the second derivative, the first step is, is to find the first derivative. So let's differentiate both sides of this equation. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of y squared, or I should say negative y squared, is negative 2y times, since I'm differentiating with respect to x, times the derivative of y with respect to x, which I'll represent with a y prime factor. On the other side of the equation, the derivative of 3 is 0. Solving for y prime, I'll have negative 2y times y prime equals negative 2x. And then dividing both sides of the equation by negative 2y to isolate the y prime gives me negative 2x over negative 2y, or in lowest terms, x over y. So the first derivative of x squared minus y squared equals 3 is x over y. Let's now find the second derivative by differentiating this. Well, the derivative of y prime, the, der the first derivative of y, has a derivative of y prime prime. The derivative of x over y using the quotient rule, the quotient rule states that I should take the denominator unchanged times the derivative of the numerator, and here the numerator is x, so its derivative is 1, minus the numerator unchanged, which is x, times the derivative of the denominator. The denominator is y, and with respect to x, the derivative of y is y prime. All over, the denominator squared. So here the denominator was y, the denominator squared is y squared. So the second derivative at this point I have written as y times 1 minus x times the derivative of y. Well, y times 1 is y, and the y prime, well, I'm certainly not going to leave that in my final answer when finding the second derivative. I want my second derivative in terms of x and y only. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I originally found y prime to be, x over y, and substitute that for y prime in my second derivative. So now I have y prime equals y minus x, not times y prime, but, time, but by what y prime is equal to, x over y, all over y squared. Well, x times x over y is x squared over y. And I do have my second derivative here. I have a second derivative that is in terms of x and y. But I want to simplify that. This is a complex fraction. I want to eliminate this denominator, and I can do that by multiplying the numerator and denominator by y. y over y is just 1, so I'm not changing the value of this second derivative. When I multiply the numerator by y, I have to be sure to distribute that to both terms. There's only one term in the denominator. And after that distribution, I have y squared minus y times x squared over y, y times x squared over y, will result in the cancellation of the y's and just an x squared over y to the third power. Now something interesting happens in this second derivative, and that is y squared minus x squared, if I factor a negative out to the front of it, well, if I factor a negative out to the front of it, the negative x squared becomes positive x squared, and what was once positive y squared is now negative y squared. And the reason that I've done that is if you notice, the original problem stated that x squared minus y squared was equal to 3. And after factoring that negative out to the front, I have the exact quantity x squared minus y squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute x squared minus y squared with 3. And that, again, comes from the original problem stated that x squared minus y squared was equal to 3. And the denominator y to the third will stay unchanged. But I now have a very simple form for the second derivative, which is negative 3 over y to the third.